Hello everyone, it's Friday, so that means another Friday product post here at SparkFun Electronics. And we've got a couple products this week to talk about, as we always do, and in addition we've got the results of the contest, so if you were one of the people to enter the contest, you might want to watch the video and find out if you won. So, let's see what we've got for this week. First up, we've got our newest revision of the Nindoff Razor. The Nindoff Razor is not a new board by any means, but this new version uses the new HMC 5883L magnetometer, so it is the newest version, all the chips are current, and we do have this in stock. So if you're looking for a 9 degree of freedom board, check out the Razor. There's a lot of examples on the internet, there's a lot of different codes for it, and there's a ton of discussion of all the different things it can do, so you really don't have to be alone on this one, there's a lot of community behind it. So this next product has actually created a little bit of buzz in the comments already, and regardless if you love or hate LabVIEW, this is an interesting product. It is the Arduino Uno bundled together with the student version of LabVIEW. Now, this is only about 20 bucks more than the Arduino on its own, so essentially you're getting the LabVIEW Student Edition for 20 bucks, which is a pretty decent deal. The LabVIEW software works directly with the Arduino, and it has all the libraries and interfacing, so you can hook up an Arduino and start using it right away. So, it is pretty cool whether or not you like or dislike LabVIEW. It's a good bundle for a lot of different people. So, this next product isn't exactly new. We've had it on the site for a while, but this is a new revision of it. You might have remembered the RFID evaluation board, and we had some mess up with the silkscreen. That is now fixed. And we've actually added some new example code for this. So the example code makes it a lot easier to use. And we wanted to show you the benefit of using a MyFair tag over a normal RFID tag. The MyFair tags can store data on them, so you can store something to it and then later retrieve it. So Nick's written some example code, so Nick's going to show you how that works. The interesting thing about MyFair tags is that you can actually store up to 1K of data on them, divided into 16-byte blocks of data. Now, the new example code that we've added for the device will allow you to store and retrieve four byte blocks of data from the tag. If we look at the screen here, you can see if I pull up the example code, it'll say start and it'll immediately try to log into whatever tag is in the area. If there's no tag, it'll give you a failed login status, followed by a failed read status, and some junk for block content. Now, I have here three different types of MyFair RFID tags, and I'm just going to scan one of them, and you'll see that it returns a successful login status, followed by a successful read status, and the content of the memory block. This doesn't have anything written to the memory block, so it returns junk characters. It'll then ask me if I want to write any data to the block. I can enter a four-digit number, press enter, and then it'll tell me what I wanted to write, and then give me a write status. This is a successful write status, which means that if I remove the tag from the device and then put it back, it'll read it and give me the block contents, 2354, the same number that I just wrote. If I take this tag away and scan a different tag, it reads a different block contents. 2467 was the last number that I wrote to this tag. I can write a different number to it. It writes there pull up a different tag, and I can retrieve the data from the different tags that I've stored on these three different RFID tags. So last week we had a contest, and the contest was to guess how much the mold cost to make the plastic pieces for the N2 rowing assembly. And the actual plastic pieces cost about 80 cents, and the mold price was actually $9,106 and that is back in 2006. We had a lot of guesses, anywhere from about $200 all the way up to about a half a million, and um, if you look down the product post, you can actually see a graph that I've compiled to show the distribution of all the different guesses. So 9,100 was actually the closest guess without going over. So whoever guessed 9,100, you're gonna get an email and you're gonna win the whole kit. So there you have it. The results to our second contest here at SparkFun. We will have more in the future videos. And we got some new products this week. Um, next week we're going to have even more. So stay tuned, watch next week, and watch for new contests.